The introduction of this current Formula 1 regulation set, the rear wing was required to have a continuous main plane with a minimum radius. Now into the third season of this set, most of the small details have been found for aerodynamic development. One particular area, among many, is the junction of the second wing element and the main plane. This area was slow to be developed, due, I suspect, to the unconventional nature of the geometric requirements. In this video, I'll explore some of the solutions that have been run in this area and drawing inspiration mainly from last year's Red Bull. The first step was to create a profile that worked. The aim was a high downforce setup and use that as a baseline. Looking at the Red Bull's 2023 20, wings for the purpose of measuring the pixels, it is in a conventional profile with the upper side deeply concave with a steep second element. The leading edge is sharpish and mostly consistent across the span. The underside is a spoon, spanwise flatter in the middle, then the radius reduces out to the side where it wraps around to form the end plate, mandatory in the regulations. Initially, the majority of the field ran a configuration similar to this wing are used for my previous simulations. The profile is traced from the leaked Williams car from 2021 blending the profile to wrap around to the sides. I never changed this wing during the 20 odd simulations of this car, so for reference, this wing, depending on the bodywork of the upstream car, it had an SCZ of negative 0.75 to negative 0.86, and a lift to drag ratio of negative 2.6 and negative 3.1. I'm including the beam wing here, which I did change to interact with the floor better. However, it never really affected the numbers of the wing, though it helped with the floor. So the dominant influence was the upstream components. Because I'm not running this new wing on the car, it should inherently be more efficient. However, the beam wing is just a single element and isn't coupled with the floor. It isn't really designed, it's just there for the moment, with the idea that the upwish will have some effect. It has a large separation that is consistent across all the sets of simulation runs, making it far more inefficient than otherwise. I'm actually surprised that it works at all, given the crude aggressive shape. Anyway, the point is, it is not a direct comparison to the previous wing, considering how much the upstream car affects it. Starting from a very similar place as the early 2022 designs, this configuration will become the baseline and its lifted drag ratio of negative 3.15 and its SCZ negative 1.67. This is the least efficient configuration, which makes sense as efficiency is an important characteristic for these cars. Therefore it is assumed and became apparent that most of the work done on these wings was to improve efficiency. It was also mentioned by technical leads in their 2024 commentary on their competitors. The iterations tested in these following CFD simulations are directly applied to this junction area, pointing out similarities that can be seen on the cars. Recent developments aren't captured, as this area seems like a fertile place where gains can be still found. The first iteration changed how the main plane connected with the end plate higher and flatter for the upper surface. There are some tweaks to the second element's upper surface. Overall, this configuration improved efficiency from the baseline by 2.5%, at the expense of a 1.7% drop in downforce. These headline values are helpful, but I'm actually interested in why these numbers are different. So how does any change affect the loading across the span? Is it local? or is it propagated across the whole span? To do this, I extracted the load from the surfaces along the span and the surface around the element junction mod modification. The answer it turns out, it depends. The first iteration has more local load than the baseline. Outside of this change, everything else has a reduced load. Efficiency gain only near the junction, everywhere else it is worse. That may have to do with the upper plane change, and that was likely a backward step. The line integral convolution 
from the shear stresses on the surface, coupled with the pressure map shows the flow is not as smooth and there is a bit more purple for the baseline. We do have images of cars with flow vis for cross reference, but it is not a direct representation, it's a guide. They are testing specific geometry, though the characteristics seem to correlate to some extent. The next iteration is a bit different. It is mostly similar to what we have seen on the medium downforce wings. The second element attachment is forwards, and the main plane radius is at a minimum. The biggest difference in the result here is that the LIC map shows that the air is getting caught by the connecting piece, directing it under the second element. This was a 1.2% increase in both the load and efficiency compared to the baseline. It was a direct result of local loads, and this had the same element profile as the, the previous case. So the loads now would be an equivalent to an increase. At the back, this model got a bit messy. It was really difficult to model. I thought I got a reasonable surface. I must have been tired because it wasn't even close. Zooming in, the pore surfacing is seen, but aerodynamically the biggest issue is with the low pressure area above the main plane. Reducing the main plane length would mean this pressure zone is behind the main plane and should improve performance. Keeping the appalling surfacing, a crew cut out of the area of the main plane doubled the performance gain with a little more efficiency. Now we have 2.3% more downforce and 1.3% more efficiency. Cleaning up the geometry will get more performance. But this is illustrative of the scale of gains from this area. The next two cases are the same as each other. The difference is one extends the corner out to the perimeter of the regulation box. A slightly more simple version of this slot gap separator that is a specific piece between the profiles. These are a little more efficient by half a percent while I only have 0.2 and 0.5% better downforce respectively. I don't really have anything to say about this configuration other than it's nice to measure the difference in such a small change. These two cases seem to not exploit the outwash of the upper main plane as well as I might have hoped. Even though the second element is more inswept than the previous two, it probably should have been more. There is also probably detail missing where the second element is attached. So for the next case, I swept the element forts. The result was relatively dramatic, a 2.9% increase in downforce. The SEZ is negative 1.72. The leading edge has much better alignment with the air and the pressure map has the telltale purple that signifies high loads. Extracting the surface directly around the corner we are concerning ourselves with. It has the highest local loads with a SCZ of negative 0.59, around 3.4% of the total. To wrap this up, the requirement for these wings profiles to blend into the end plates presents a challenge that is only slowly being met. Separating the second element's junction has allowed function to be added with their intrinsic gains in performance. Due to the highly irregular context brought by the rule set, there is likely more innovation to come in this area.